Om Mahaganapataye Namaha. In this video, I'm going to talk about the science of knowing the future and how not only can you get readings and oracles and all this stuff about knowing the future, about future events, but also how you yourself can have intuitions and why you know certain things before they happen. First, in order to explain this, we have to understand what is a destiny. A destiny is referring to a destination. So, what is the future and how can you understand it ahead of time? Well, if you are under, able to understand the information that you hold within you. For example, right now you have a certain genetic code. And that genetic code, when it culminates, is going to produce a certain effect. So a destiny or a destination is nothing but the effect or the culmination effect of a certain amount of information, whether that's genetic information or whatever. So if you are able to understand it, first if you are able to understand the information, and then if you're able to interpret the information and how it, how, the, how it combines to create a certain effect, then you can know the future. It's actually just logic. Now, these enlightened beings, the oracles and all this, they have a certain sixth sense, if you will, that allows them to perceive this information, or in a more simplistic way, they have an intuition. Now, intuition, what we can say about intuition is, intuition, how you can know something in advance, even though you don't know how to know, is because a part of you, that information, that, uh, that uh, how do I say, the recognition of the destination or the destiny, comes through you so you're able to identify that, right? Because you are holding on information and a part of you, the more intelligent part of you, which is more, uh, the s more silent you go, the more into the subconscious, unconscious you go, the more greater and greater information you get access to. If you look at it, something like this in particle physics where they say, from the foundation of everything lies a field of silence. This is related to your unconscious. From that silence, you have waves that come up, and then these coalesce into particles that become molecules and so on and, and, and become the world that we see. Now, our conscious mind is operating in a field of the effect. So if we can just take it for granted for the intention of explaining this point, if you can imagine a triangle where the tip of the triangle is the effect, it's the highest point, and the base of this is where the origin comes from. We are trying to operate from this tip. We're not able to see or understand anything because we're not identified with the, with the uh, foundation from which the effect rose from. So if you're able to identify yourself with the baseline, you can have a different unique vantage point, isn't it? If you're seeing from, if you're in the forest and it's thick brush and you're trying to find your way out, you can take any direction, and it's just a trial and error. You have no idea. This direction may lead to a cliff, and you may have to go around a couple miles to the, the south in order to get through. Or it may lead you to uh, deeper into the forest. Whereas if you are able to sit above the forest, and you're looking down, maybe from a helicopter, you can see, okay, right, this person's here. If they were to walk at this particular angle, they will get the most immediate effect on it because they have a unique vantage point, and just like this. By identifying yourself with these more silent states or subconscious, unconscious levels of your mind, your vantage point changes and you can understand, understand things from a totally different perspective. And your intuition is almost like little bursts of this perspective coming through, trickling into your conscious mind. So knowing in, in advance is actually part of your natural capability. The problem is we are so rooted in our conscious mind or the effect, and we are not taking ourselves deeper in trying to unlock the full potential of our mind, which is what yoga is actually all about. Yoga is all about yoking the conscious mind with the unconscious mind, or it is about pushing your conscious awareness so that there is no unconscious, so that all what we're calling is the subconscious and unconscious is your conscious state. And at that level, you can see through time. You can see everything in advance. You can also see the past. Now, this is information is valuable because what it is is a concept. So, for example, if I was to tell you, if we met you, if we met on the street, and I was to say, "Hey, did you know you can know the future? You know that it's part of you." 
Most people would say, that's ridiculous. That sounds insane. How could I possibly know the future? It hasn't even happened yet. Well, in fact, one way of looking at this, although this is a very, very simplistic way of looking at it, there are, of course, if you go deeper into the, the science of time and all this, everything is actually happening simultaneously. Whereas our conscious mind is actually experiencing what we call as time in a linear fashion where there is a present moment, there's a past, and there's a future. Where there are other perspectives where you can, just like a CD player, where, okay, look at it this way, like a CD player, you can skip around to different tracks. You can go to track 18, you can go to track 2, you can go to track 5. You don't have to go from track 1, finish the song, go to track 2, finish the song. You can skip ahead, bounce around. This is more... Uh, more like what time is really like according to the physicists and also according to the yogic sciences but on a very very practical level on a very basic level, on a very logical level one way you can also understand this is it's nothing but information time itself and reality itself is nothing but information and whenever you're able to know something that's happening at time is because some part of you has been able to synthesize and pull that information into your conscious mind and that information in the future is nothing but a culmination effect of a destiny. It is a culmination of information that is operating currently. So if you take a certain amount of ingredients and you put them all together and you let them cook for a certain amount of time, eventually you're going to bake a maybe a loaf of bread or a pumpkin pie or whatever it is. Similar like this, if you have this certain sort of combinations and each one of these in pieces of information is allowed to flower and blossom and then when they combine together, it's going to create a certain outcome. This is all that destiny is saying. So another way this is very useful is to change your destiny. It is about changing your information. So that's why you may have, if you've ever experienced where you've had readings, future readings, where the readings seem to change continuously, it is because something has happened where you've been able to change that destiny. The information has changed where the first destiny is no longer there anymore. It's a whole new destiny. So when you say something like, you can literally change your destiny, what it means is if you can change your information, your givens, you are changing your destiny. It's just like a sniper rifle. Or a, think of it like this for those in the military. A sniper is all about predicting different variances in the wind and the environment, curvature of the supposed earth. And all these different factors that goes into taking that piece of metal from the barrel of the gun and putting it on a target, say a thousand meters away or whatever, very, very far away. It's not just as simple as point and shoot. They have to factor in all these different things. Now, if you're able to change the wind by even wondering, if you're able to change the barrel, if you're shooting at 1,000 yards away or 10,000 yards away, if you change the barrel by just a tiny, teeny, tiny degree, in the long run, the trajectory is going to change dramatically. So if you can change your orientation just a little bit and just make a one small change, in theory, you can change your entire destiny. So this is a very, very important concept to remember when you're looking at ways to change your life and thinking, well, this is such a small thing. Why would I even bother doing it? I'm only going gonna, gonna to wait for that big thing where I win the lottery. I'm going to wait for that big thing where somebody just gives it to me. Just do the little things to change the orientation, to change your information. Chant mantras, uh, affirmations, remaining positive, changing your habits, changing your neurology, changing your actions, reconditioning yourself. Any of these little things, they do add up. Because your destiny is not one big thing. It's a comb combination. It's a synthesis of teeny tiny pieces of information that have all culminated to produce that effect. So I hope this video helps and inspires you and gives you some concepts that you can use to change your life right now and get results. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please leave them underneath this video. If you found this video valuable, make sure to click the like button and share it with others who you think would find it valuable too. And if you'd like to be notified for future videos, make sure to click subscribe and the bell notification. God bless.